Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Seditionists. I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Keith Reeves. And um, Keith and I were just talking about what we wanted to discuss this time around. And <laughs> we, we pride ourselves on being revolutionary. We pride ourselves on being uh, thinkers who are not willing to just uh, take what mainstream says and accept it, but we want to think beyond uh, the norm. Uh, so we're going to take on politics. And we're going to take on Trump and Hillary Clinton. Um, but we're not going to go at it with whose opinion of who's better for education and all that kind of stuff. We're going to leave that up to you. But what I would like to discuss with Keith today is what does the current state of our political system mean to education, both in what we've done to create this situation and what is it going to mean for education in the future? Um, as an example, um, Donald Trump, who, you know, like him or not like him, has a certain uh, style about him. And uh, people have a tendency to, 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 to go, uh, how do I say this, for and against facts. Like he has a tendency just to blatantly say, I didn't say that when they've got facts against that. So the people who believe in him and stick with him, are they not able to believe the facts or have we created a, a, a system of people that just don't care about the facts? Um, I see what so I'm, I guess my curiosity is because these kids, these adults who are now voting are our no child left behind students. If you look at the years, <laughs> they are the kids that have had a decade of no child left behind where you are given... Uh, a multiple choice question, you were given four possible answers, and it is guaranteed that one of them has to be the right answer. It's not the way the world works, but what are your thoughts, Keith? You know, it's interesting. I was like, where are you going with this, man? Because <laughs> I don't want to get myself in trouble here. <laughs> but you raise a couple of really interesting points. I mean, certainly the, the first thing that came to mind you while you were speaking is I do think that we have some difficulties as a society talking honestly about evidence. That that you know, Dan, and I've quoted this on the show before. Uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan's uh, saying uh, people are entitled to their own opinions, but they're not entitled to their own facts. I'm troubled, consistently troubled by people who refute what is empirically observable with a huge set of consistency. One would go so far as to say provable. The, the, I, I, I get on Instagram sometimes. I, there's fascinating, you know, uh, images on, on Instagram. I'm particularly entertained by people from countries that aren't from mine and I get to see things I wouldn't get to see normally. And I'm, I was shocked the other day to discover that there's still, like, it's 2016, and there are still flat earthers who fervently believe that we live on a flat surface like a dish in space. What? <laughs> but, okay, I, what, like you said, what ramifications does this have for us as educators? Somebody failed this kid. Now, the, is it the teacher? I think that one might be able to indict the system. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say, is that if the education system in this country allows people to listen to a person, whoever it is, and I think that there are probably people in both camps who would say, the other candidate does this, to listen to observable falsehood, provable falsehood, and accept it. To accept it because they were told to accept it, to accept it because they don't believe what they read. They don't know how to look at primary sources. They don't know how to do independent research. They don't know how to look at the aggregate sum of what the literature says versus what some Yahoo says. That that does have ramifications for education now that I think about it. We should be placing a primary focus, a huge um, uh, emphasis on teaching students to critically think and observe and take the empirical evidence, find out where that evidence came from, and then make informed decisions. Because it is apparent from this political process that a huge number of people just simply don't know how to get to the truth, or I shouldn't say truth, to get to facts. And that does have ramifications for us now that you mention it. Right. And, and, and I think um, even though the Common Core itself has its own set of political wires attached to it. I think one thing that it does do rather well is 
gets beyond the multiple choice, four questions, guaranteed answers, and gets sure. them back into let's read for content, let's read for knowledge, let's um, let let's let's debate and discuss. And those are a lot of things that uh, are coming out in my new book that I have, the the eighteen week future ready challenge, where it's you know, let's get out beyond. The, the, the multiple choice world, even though there is a place for it, and let's get into critical thinking. And I would be very interesting to see if, you know, the, the, the millennials and the kids that are the people that are voting now, how that impacted them of having a decade of that style of answer and only that style of question and answer. That was our world for yeah. a whole decade. And now I think we're feeling the ramifications of it because either camp, again, like you said, isn't stopping to go, okay, what's fact and what's a lie? Based on research, what which candidate would be better for, for me as a person or for my community or for whoever you, you know, some people look at it as the greater good of the country. Some people are like, hey, I'm a teacher. I'm going to vote right. for somebody who's purely into education. You know, so figure out those facts and, and not and not just take for for face value what either of them are saying. Yeah, debate and discourse has really died in this country. Oh. And, and it's frustrating to me as someone who's passionate about debate. Yeah. I don't like argument. I do like debate. I want people to bring their best material arguments right. to tackle me on the things, to challenge my preconceptions and not just shout at me. I hate the phrase, we'll agree to disagree. I hate that phrase. It drives me crazy. I'm like that. Just we, we're, that's just two people who've decided the other person is a jerk. You know, uh, there, there's uh, be, as much as I'm into continuum thinking. As much as I don't like binary and opposed thinking, I don't like things at either pole. I'm trying to get out of even using the word. Uh, my friend Jay Hammond recently challenged me on using the word continuum because it implies polar, and I'm trying to use the term manifold more. Because there's so many different permutations and possibilities for so many different things. I want people to bring their evidence and their experience and observable fact and research and literature and thought and critical thinking and logic, God's help us all, to the table so we can have a meaningful debate. But too often I find that people devolve into this kind of finger pointing, shouting stuff, which is all we're hearing right now. I haven't heard any substantive policy discussions that I think had a rational exchange from any of the candidates. Yeah. That's a huge source of frustration. And you're right. There probably is something to be said about constantly being faced with these very simple pre-compartmentalized ideas rather than having meaningful discourse and debate. I would be a fool not to also make a plug here. I think that our running away from the liberal arts screaming throughout the 20th century can be directly, and, and then the 19th century, to be fair, the late 19th century, um, I think we can directly indict that um, when it comes to the disillusion of meaningful, substantive discourse. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, 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 and at the end, you know, in, in less than four weeks, we're going to see which way the, uh, oh, the United God. States goes when it comes to this, to this particular... Serious. These particular candidates, oh. uh, I, I'm not going to give my opinion on the candidates, and I don't think you are either. No, I am but, not. <laughs> but, but, but what I but what I honestly think my opinion is, and what I would really like to scream from the rooftops would be to get out of your shell of taking everything from both candidates at face value and do your own research, do your own looking into everything they're discussing. You know, the, the, the whole idea of, you know, you did it, no, you did it, no, you did it is not going to fix our country. You, so, know, so, you raise you a know, really to, critical point there. Go ahead. That the one thing I will say about my politics is I have no party, right? That my politics don't align with either of the primary parties because you can't just say, well, I have two, I have, there's two flavors. There's Republican and Democrat, and that's all there is. And I'll speak specifically about, like, take just... It, it, it must be said that the, the schism that we're talking about right now is in the Republican Party. The Republican Party doesn't stand for the same thing that it stood for 10 years ago. There's There are differences in the policy. There's substantive differences to the platforms. And we can't ignore that. So if a person says, I'm a Republican, and I've been a Republican for 30 years, it's it's observable fact that the current Republican Party platform in 2016 does not match the Republican platform of 30 years ago. So if you say I'm a Republican, well, why? What are the reasons behind that? Find those reasons and do those truly still align with. Now, if you yourself have changed, 
that I accept. But if your values have been consistent, the parties haven't been. And so you have to think outside the box. It's not just A, B, C, D, F. Everything being a continuum, you have to do a substantive critical analysis of the issues and then behave accordingly. And I know people on all ends of the spectrum, people that have said, I'm voting Republican because I think the Republicans will come back. I know people that are saying, I'm voting Republican because I have changed with the party. I know people that are saying, I'm voting Republican because I want to drive a wedge into the middle of it and split it in half. I know people that say, I'm a diehard Republican and therefore I can't vote for this candidate. I'm a diehard Republican and they have left me as a party. Every permutation of Republican exists, right? It, but it's still at the end of the day, it's one R, it's one party, it's one thing. Isn't there room for other ways of being? And I think that's a, a conversation that the Republicans right now are having, and it informs, it feeds directly into the discussion that you and I are having. Do we say there are only so many choices, or do we stop and critically think and reanalyze, and perhaps it's time for something new? It's, it's a very interesting question that is directly relevant to the way that we run education. And, and, and I think you and I are probably in the same party, and I'm going to name that party right now. You ready? We are <laughs> issuists. We believe, in, <laughs> we believe in looking at the issues. It doesn't matter if you have an R or a D or an ABC. We vote based on what, what's good for us, what we think is good for the country, based on the issues that they're, that they're discussing. Or uh, don't plat vote. Yeah. Platformists. Maybe we're platformists. <laughs> yeah. You know, I guess that's I, – I hear a lot of people that say, you, you know, you have to vote. It's your, your civic duty. I'm not going to put my support – it's my one lever of power as a citizen in this country. I'm not going to put it behind somebody that I can't support. And right. so sometimes I don't vote. That's a choice too. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So with that being said, to, to sum it up, students, parents, adults, everybody who's watching this, go read the research. Do your own studying. Don't take things at face value. Read the platforms. Be a good student. Even the Read adult. the Constitution. Read the, even a good student. We have, to, we have to do a lot of studying. And we've got a big decision coming up uh, a few weeks from now. And whichever way the, the, the cookie crumbles, whichever way things fall, um, you know, we're still Americans and we still have an educational system that we need to fix. We so, do. Yes. So this is Rob Furman and Keith Reeves signing off. Thank you very much and have a good one.